Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome or welcome back to the JKWD podcast. We hope you are having a great day. I apologize for my allergies. You are surely going to hear me sneeze or sniffle or something. I'm not going to make it to the mute button, and I apologize for that in advance. But we're going to have some fun. Anyway, Kelvin, how you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing just fine, Mr. Shear. Just fine. It's a lovely day here in uh, in central New York. A pretty much a perfect temperature in my book. And a uh, nice little breeze and life and no precipitation at present. So, uh, hey, it's a beautiful day. Right. And, and I'm doing all right. And uh, how about you? I am doing all right. We are not having the same weather you are. It is still S- SFH, you know, awfully darn humid. Uh, and <laughs> I went out for my run this morning. And when I checked my tracker on the way back, it said start temperature 82 and temperature 91. And that was that was this morning. It's not early this morning. So um, I just gotta. I, I just have to remember to start getting up early if I'm gonna do this running thing. <laughs> Man, 91 is gonna feel bad when I'm doing it for two hours. <laughs> yes, it's probably gonna feel bad. Um, you just all of a sudden got very far away from your microphone, sir. I I did. Yes. I, I didn't mean to. Am I am I closer? Yes, you're closer. Good. That's better. You know because. <laughs> Sometimes the technology does what it wants to do. So, according well, to Well, sometimes list, technology does things that's unexpected, but I don't think technology actually has wants and desires the way that we do. You know, I think we could make a great argument for the fact that technology is has an evil mind, but we can that's a different podcast. I mean, some AI might, but <laughs> some AI might, but most, most, uh, in my personal experience, most, most software and hardware problems are user error. Sometimes there's a glitch, but it's rarely intentional on the part of the machine side. The inanimate stuff. object. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's right. You know, the non the chair the chair never collapses out of intention it just is worn down and eventually falls apart right I think there's an alternate universe where we could explore th- explore that <laughs> explore that explore that but not today not today not today today when we are brought to you by vitamin K daily the first thing I read today. Kevin's been getting these out at 3.30 a.m., so they are there for you when you wake up, unless you're somewhere else on the planet and you've been up for many hours by that point. Mm -hmm. If, for example, you're in Australia, you're getting it in the early evening. (laughs) Mm, No, they'll be getting it early evening then that same day, right? Is there tomorrow, not yesterday? So twelve or fourteen hours, I think. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of that stuff. But yeah. They're on the other side of the world. They are. They are. Well, and so are we. The underside of the world. <laughs> and we are also on the other side of the world from them. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be one of those days. <laughs> it is gonna be one of those days. I apologize for that because you know, you know, we're starting to get goofy already. So, uh-huh. Vitamin K Daily. Get yourself four weeks free by going to vitaminkdaily.com. Find out how awesome your day is going to be in your inbox right when you wake up. And after that four weeks, just $24.95 a year. Get it now before that price goes up because you will be grandfathered in. Vitaminkdaily.com. Four weeks free. Let's do the show. Josh and Kelvin, world domination. 
podcast where we talk about better humanhood and teach you how to dominate your world. You ready? Here we go. You're laughing, but if I keep saying it, it's going to happen. <laughs> I'm not laughing. You are laughing. I'm looking at, I'm watching you laugh just because they can't see you on the audio. It doesn't mean you're not laughing. I have video uh, <laughs> and you're recording. So you're the one who gets to cover up the evidence. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. I am. So what's uh, happening? What are, we, what are we talking about today there, boss? Well, you were just pulling out quotes and you you came up with one. Was it everybody's born an amateur or nobody's born a pro? Something along those lines. Yeah, you, and of course I don't have that directly in front of me. Yeah, but nobody. Yes, nobody is born a pro. You have to learn it, work with it, do it from scratch. And what does that mean to you? That means that everything in my life that I've ever learned to do. I mean, I had to learn to do starting from walking as a baby. I don't think I had to learn to cry, but for physical things, walking, talking, crawling, all that stuff, I had to learn to do. It didn't just fall out of the sky, which means if there's something else in life I want to do, I get to learn that too. And it's great because by the time you decide whether you want to learn something, you have a you have a long list of things you've learned in your life. That's right. Some of those things are harder to learn than others, and yeah, you know, but you're pretty successful at the early stuff. Uh, you've been you've probably been walking for sixty five years at least. Um, yeah, at least. I don't think I look. I don't think I was an early bloomer, so we were right in there. But yeah, I've been walking for at least that long. You know, and uh, talking, you know, similarly, not at the, you know, current level of. I'm not even sure what word I want to put on that. <laughs> current level. But yeah, but it didn't start out that way. I started out making funny sounds, and my family used to have. Uh, Nicknames were the funny sounds I used to make, but really, it wasn't speech. <laughs> but, but we any, any and now what I've learned they can't any appropriate it. any appropriate nicknames we we no, can hear no, no, <laughs> none of that <laughs> none of that but uh, the closest we could get to it except it was is babble but people say I do that now anyway you know. <laughs> Depends on the audience, but you know, there there are other things that I that I didn't know how to do when I was born that I learned to do, uh, at very levels like like playing the piano, playing drums, learning to type. Back in the days when the keyboards didn't have letters on them, uh, you had uh, you had one of those. Typing classes where they blacked out the keys and put the yeah, uh, configuration my, up on the screen so that you just looked up and yeah that thing one of, one yeah. of my uncles had a typewriter with no keys on it so I mean with no letters on it so I'm just watching the magic of him like how do you know which one to hit oh he was the same one that also played piano by by ear so how do you do that either so well I'm pretty sure that the keys on the typewriter didn't make different tones for the letters. Well, technically, you know, just the way mechanics is, each one probably has a different. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you're category. probably right. It wouldn't category that way. Yeah, <laughs> I learned that. Well, I won't tell you where I learned that. But. <laughs> but yeah, so and and you know, most of us aren't born geniuses. Although, I've met four-year-olds who could sing, play instruments, and dance. I wasn't one of them. Yeah, I mean that's learned, and you know, our Brains have more space for stuff at that age, right? Sort of. Your stories. We're more interested in novelty and sticking with novelty at that point. But but novels novelty really you know still lights us up 
as adults, we just have to give up the resistance to it. <laughs> we do. We do. And, and, you know, and, and even now days, I mean, when you listen to the stories of the older people, you know, some even older than me, you know, that, that it is a thing who decide to go back to college, learn a new skill. Yeah. Get a degree, stuff like that. We still have it. Once we, there's two things, two components to that, in my opinion. One is to have the desire, and the two is to give yourself permission to explore. Yeah, and I feel like the permission is more important, almost. Yeah, but you know, so, I mean, the 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 actual initial urge probably shows up uh, initially. And then we talk ourselves out of it. Oh, I, I can't learn to swim at this age. I can't learn to do basket weaving at this age. I can't learn to be a nuclear physicist. Right. There's the there's the permission. Yeah. And now we got to give ourselves permission to get past that because pretty much if we keep telling ourselves we can't, then we won't because right. – And – yeah, that's really part of uh, Stephen Pressfield's concept of, of resistance, right? Capital R resistance. Yes, it, you know, it's us telling it's us telling ourselves we can't. It's also other people telling us we can't, and us listening. Because we're we're good at taking that stuff to heart, and for some reason, it seems to be more difficult to take. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is correct. Sometimes I don't. I don't know what the neurobiology behind that is, but it really, it really does seem to be. Well, you know, they used to tell us, you know, when we were doing the MK MMA, they talked about us. You know, we have it. We we were born with a negativity bias. Right. right. So. I get. I, I don't. Well, I don't. I don't know if we're born with a negativity bias, but I think it shows up pretty soon. Pretty soon after that. So, you know. Well, I know we're born with defensiveness, right? You know. Oh crap! That thing's a tiger. I better get out of here. Oh wait, it's not a tiger. I'm okay. Um, I'm not even so sure. I'm not even so sure of that. Initially, you know, they were talking about we were born with two fears. One was. Fear of falling, and the other one's a fear of loud noises. I suppose the tiger could come into that loud noise thing, right? Yeah, so, it could. And, and, and pretty much everything else we learned, uh, but but we came equipped with with loud noises and falling, which I can understand. Those are good things to come equipped with, I guess. Yeah. So, but but everything else, I mean, I. Um, Oh my God! I remember. I actually remember trying to learn to ride a bicycle. <laughs> and not only that, later in life, when I hadn't ridden one for a while, I, I remember trying to relearn how to. <laughs> balance is a really important thing when you're trying to ride a bicycle. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to be you know 45 and riding with training wheels. Yeah, exactly. It people talk about you, but you know we we have to get accustomed to those things and. The biggest thing is, and I, you know, I say it, I do it, I have to apply it to me, is you have to allow yourself permission to learn something. Once you give yourself permission to learn it, whatever it is, um, whatever it is, even painting. I, hey, one of my exes, we used to do a lot of painting in their youth. Had, painting like painting like 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 on canvas like, or walls uh, <laughs> more more canvas and okay. or those type services artistic type stuff and when i learned that because um, she hadn't done it in a while when i learned that she it was something she loved i actually bought her some some tools with which to to take that back up because i thought it would be a really cool thing and she'd enjoy it but as it turns out at that point, she didn't give herself permission to get back into that, so she never did, which was a shame because I was really looking forward to some of it. I'd seen the earlier stuff, and I'm like, oh, this would be real cool. And uh, but that I learned, I mean, I learned to play the piano, I learned to play a, the piano for, for pure joy. Now, don't get me wrong, I, 
I didn't become a concert pianist. Right. But I was cool enough to play, you know, piano for gospel choir. When was the last time you sat down at a keyboard? Uh, I'm not even sure I know what they look like anymore. <laughs> it's been it's been a few years. It's been a few years, but I did it since I did it, and I and I learned to sing. Um, but and while I was doing it, I was doing it, and but then. You know, once you get out of practice, well, now it's like kind of relearning it again. It's not really the same process as, as before, because at least you have knowledge and instincts to fall back on mm-hmm. if you allow yourself to do that. So when I want to have that fun, I just I can go back to my mom's house. My mom's not there anymore, but the piano still is. And uh, <laughs> and uh, and go back and, and bring bring that back up. And it's and it's kind of cool. So, and the more you love it, the better you get at it. Because if you're doing something and you keep telling yourself you hate it, then you're still just right. programming yourself not to do it. So, giving ourselves permission to do more and to, and to learn more, despite what other people might say. Like I said, I plan to be learned learn to... Uh, Live to be 156. Man, that's a long time to sit around and do nothing. You have plenty to learn, right? <laughs> plenty to learn because they keep making stuff up as we go along. That was humor. What? What's? Are you learning anything right now? Am I learning either either intentionally or accidentally? Um. No, actually, right now I'm trying to get back to things I let go previously. Okay. So in a in a way, I'm kind of relearning things. But I mean, there's always something to you know. When these days, when I go up there, I mean, there's something else that comes up that's new that didn't used to be there. Um, God, if you own a computer or a smartphone, you got to learn something new every time there's an update. <laughs> so life uh they're building in a lot of things we have to learn even with the technology that we use but there's nothing in particular mostly i want to finish things i started before that i let go for one reason or another or anything in particular right now right now um I'm an excellent photographer, but I haven't let myself do much of it lately. So right now I'm, I'm having a big urge to go back and create. Now, I mean, I still sell photography, but I've been doing simple stuff, headshots, stuff like that. I want to go back to the creative side. And, and Well, and this has been a hard time for a portrait photographer, right? The last four, year and a half, really. Yeah. Uh, it's been, yeah, it's just, been, yeah, because... Yeah. And people aren't you don't, you seeing don't look good in the picture with that mask on. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, and it, it becomes not really a portrait. It becomes. Yeah. We had some, health, over- we had some health issues, but you know, people were still doing it outside depending on where you go. And some people were just, were determined that they weren't going to be affected anyway. And they, they were out doing really cool stuff anyhow. And one of the things about photography is man, your art is your art, right? There's a, there are some guidelines for doing things and how to get the effects that you want. But the biggest thing about photography is the message you want to deliver, whether it's love or beauty or fun or, or whatever. You know. Right. So there's a lot of different things in there, but yeah. So, but I'm, I'm a people person. I love photographing people and I like capturing, well, you've heard me talk about that before, just capturing, uh, their essence on on the digital image uh, now that we now that film's kind of capri- but there's so many ways to do that and the skills involved are not just technical because there's a psychology of connecting with the person mm-hmm. so we can elicit the them that they want to see in the image and and connect with it so there's a there's a lot of psychology in that along with the technical skill to create the image so 
that's fun. But I love doing that. That is so much fun for me. And there's a huge learning curve in photography that's happened over the last decade, right? Or two decades, really. That that switch from film to digital, and then the switch from kind of low content SIM cards to oh yeah, All of right. So so first you had to worry about running out of film, and then you still had to worry about running out of space on your little SD cards. Right. And now, right now you, you can take basically as many photos as you want, or you were kind of limited before, not only by having to change rolls of film, but by the fact that yeah, it caused money. (laughs) Well, that too. Yeah. Processing was, was crazy. Yeah. You, you, you had to buy film and then you had to process it. So but you know, it's a lot cheaper to take 400 pictures at a wedding now than it was 20, well, 30 years oh, ago. Yeah, as far as expense goes. But you know, people, I mean, these days, the technical side of it is, first of all, most of the people who are taking photographs aren't professional photographers. They're people who right. want images of their friends and good times and stuff like that. So the technical end of it is not so good. I mean, excuse me, is not so difficult because, um, you know, the camera manufacturers manufacturers create one product for the consumer and another product for the pro. Most consumers don't care about the stuff that that the pros care about. But man, the photos that come out of these new uh, smartphones, mm-hmm. oh, I mean, some of those think for you, I swear. And you can come up with them. When people want memories, you can come up with some incredible memories without a lot of skill. But when you're trying to produce art, it's a little different. Right. And not only that, something pros still have over amateurs is eye, right? Eye. Yeah, vision. So you and I are going to take very different pictures at a wedding. Right. Actually, you and I might not take very different pictures at a wedding because I have some idea. Yeah, I used to have to take pictures for the well, for the yeah, paper, the and is, and so I understand that particular focus, right? Right. You're going to be looking at one thing, and I'm going to be looking at something else. You're going to be you're going to be wanting to capture a, a cute, you know, I maybe want to wanting to create a a, a particular artistic moment of this couple and you just want to see the love and the smile, you know, which, which in that case, if you don't capture it in the image, you're going to fill it in with your mind. (laughs) Right. Right. And to come at it with the, is the couple going to enjoy this versus how will I remember it? Right. Is an entirely different skill to learn. And it's a skill to learn in photography. It's a skill to learn in writing. It's a skill to learn in fine art. Yeah. Yeah. So who who are you creating this for comes into play a lot. Right. And specifically, if there are you know, specific people that you're creating it for, which is different or say a mass market book. You know, we mm-hmm. talked to we talked to Bill Rue not long ago mm-hmm. about his book. He was writing about something he was interested in, but he made it interesting for many people. You know, versus when you're taking pictures at a wedding, say, mm-hmm. you'd like to enjoy yourself, but really, you've sat down with the bride and groom and found out what they want, and so you're trying to deliver your best for them. And 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 some for me because there are specific things I want from that too. So, but you know, as far as learning new things, that's um, the other part of that is that things. But you had to learn. You had to learn that, right? Yeah. Even you didn't pick up a camera and all of a sudden, all of a sudden you were the guy people. 
photograph their wedding. In the old days, you had to know what you do because just because you clicked a button didn't mean something was going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so that's different, but you know, time. Like I said, times times change, and then but and also to but also you know aside from the technical aspect, developing that vision and you know developing that eye to know where to stand and how far away to stand. All that stuff. You know, yeah. It's it's cool stuff. So how about you? Are you you're you learning something new? Uh, I am I am not. I am with intention. I mean, I'm learning new facts, but not new processes. I I am with intention uh, finishing up some research over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I am on track. We'll talk about this in a in a few weeks on our you know wrapping up second quarter. Uh, but I had intended to finish the research for the book in the second quarter, start writing in the third. I'm on track for that. Awesome. Uh, and even with running coming up, even with running coming up. Well, my life gets more organized when running during running season, mm -hmm. because I know how far I have to run and I know how I, you know, I have to plan to fuel myself. I have to plan to rest myself. So that gives me time. You know, I, I have to regiment my daily, you know, in a company, if you're giving, if you have a new project that really has to be done, mm -hmm. it has to be done well for a client. You don't give it to the person with the most time. You give it to the person on your staff with the least amount of time because they have to slot it in and they have to prioritize it. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't want to give it to the person who's just going to be like, Oh, I got time. I can drag my feet on this. Yes. Right. So that's what happens. I have a, a, uh, an advanced degree in feet dragging. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens to me when I, when I enter running season, I know that a bunch of my energy during one part of the day will be you spent running, mm -hmm. but that I'll have mental energy after I sit down because I'm going to need to, I'm going to need to like let my body rest and I'll still have some brain energy. So yeah, you know, slotting in and then it just becomes then it just becomes a matter of slotting in time, which is very easy for me because I wake up, I you know, do my hydration, all that stuff. I have my run, and I come back and I have you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes of time that I can you know, read or poke at my notes or, you know, do like some short stuff while breakfast is cooking. I can sit down at breakfast and then I have fuel uh, in my body, but not the desire to move <laughs> you know, for half an hour, 45 minutes. Yeah. And that's a good amount of time for focused worry. I don't, I don't intend to write in four hour chunks. If I can sit down and turn out 150, 200 words, in half an hour a day, yeah, it's a over a thousand words a week. Yeah, that's fifty-two thousand words a year. Yeah, that uh, that's not quite a book, but it's well on its way. And there are times that, yeah, there are times where it will be more words than that. So, yeah, waiting for you to get inspired to put more words on the paper. I dream about that. <laughs> well, who was it who said uh, you know I always wait for inspiration for, fortunately inspiration always shows up at my desk at 9 o'clock a.m. <laughs> I like that part yeah me and registration <laughs> me and registration oh my gosh me and the uh, motivation need to meet up more often but it's, it's, uh, the more you show up, the more it will show up, right? It's, 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 we're having some fun right now. So in the near future, we're going to be having a lot of fun. Good. Mark my words. Consider them marked. <laughs> All right. So if you're looking to do something and you're thinking about, nah, I can't do that because I'm not a pro. Nobody was a pro when they started out. Stephen King has written gobs of books, many of them bestsellers, many of them optioned for movies. And guess how many words he could write when he was born? Zero. None. 
He learned all that weird stuff after he was born. Well, he might have had the weird stuff in his head. He only learned to write about it later. Well, true enough. True enough. So, yeah. So, <laughs> indulge yourself. Do something fun. Don't hurt people. You know, yeah, at least try not to. You know, if yeah. if what you're learning is downhill skiing and you're like me in that one time that you learned how to stay up on your skis but not how to break, um, sit your butt down and don't crash into anybody at 70 miles an hour. Yeah, I, I, I gave up the skiing thing. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we won't worry about that. We'll work on, we'll work on something else to get good at. There you go. That doesn't mean that we can't bring skiing back into our lives. That's just a resistance thing, right? Like we talked about earlier. It's going to need to be level ground. Hills will not work for me. <laughs> yes, I can learn to stop, but <laughs> could be fun that trip to there. No, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kevin. Well, thanks for being here. Thanks everybody for listening. JKWDpodcast.com for show notes for this and all our other episodes. VitaminKDaily.com. Get yourself four weeks free, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for listening. Show notes and more at JKWDPodcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, and share with your friends, and we will see you. A Better Humanhood Production.